Hello, everybody. <laughs> uh, my name is Beatrice Carlson. I'm the program director of the festival, and I'm very honored to have with me here tonight the writer and director of the film, Francis O'Connor. Welcome. <laughs> Firstly, thank you so much for this beautiful film, and I want to uh, I'll tell all the audience it's uh, selected for the Stockholm competition. And uh, yeah, I think many of you maybe know you from as, as an actress, and we've seen you beautiful uh, portrayals such as Emily Pierce in uh, Mansfield's Park, and also as Emma Bovary in Madame Bovary. And I wanted to ask you, how does it feel to have been an actress in these beautiful period pieces and now made one of your own? I think it's nice. It's kind of nice um, at this point in my life. You know, I've done a lot of acting my whole life and it's something it's really nice to step into that position that is kind of helping other actors kind of realize performance and then also to just tell a story about something that is kind of that it's something that I want to say about like how it was for me growing up or just feel themes that I'm interested in exploring so it feels like uh, the timing's right for, for doing this kind of thing. <laughs> Yeah, I wanted to follow up a little bit about yeah. that. How do you think that your experience as an actress has taught you to be a director, and especially with how you work with the actors? We see a beautiful performance by Emma McKay here as Emily. Yeah, yeah I think Emma just did the most incredible job uh, for the film, and uh, it's an incredibly moving performance, I think. Um, but yeah, I think help being an actor, I think for other actors, when there's an actor director on the other side of the camera, you feel uh, that you're seen and you feel there's a lot of empathy coming towards you. So I tried to do that with my actors. And, um, you know, we did a lot of rehearsal, we did dancing, we did singing, you know, lots of stuff that would just help the actors kind of relax and uh, connect to each other. So yeah, I really love I really love directing actors. It was sort of like one of the best things about the film for me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and your film have already travelled to quite many festivals, and uh, I'm a bit I'm sure you're a bit tired of the question. But as a moderator, yeah. I'm yeah, obligated fun. to yeah. ask. <laughs> <laughs> and we're very curious to know what uh, inspired you and what drew you to making this story. Yeah, I mean I've always loved. Emily Bronte. I've always loved all the Brontes. I think they're just really interesting people. They wrote, you know, just these incredibly moving, beautiful, powerful books. Um, but for me, I think I identified the most with Emily. She's an introvert. I'm an introvert. Um, I kind of grew up in a house in the middle of nowhere with my siblings in the same way that she did. And um, I just really liked what, you know, what her poetry says and who she was as a person. She just struck, struck me as somebody who was very authentic, very much her own person. And um, I just felt like I wanted to tell a story kind of through her about authenticity and um, how, do you, how do you hold on to yourself as an artist when you don't really see around you people uh, reflecting back to you that who you are is, is, is good or, yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm rambling. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I wanted to ask as well that You've spoken about the significance significance of Hope holding this is us. <laughs> <laughs> um, Barely, yeah. <laughs> uh, and it's a um, so the significance of Wuthering Heights uh, as a gothic novel, and in your film, I think there's you bring these gothic elements to life into Emily's own story, and I wanted to know if you could speak a little bit more about the experiment that you have now with this biopic. Yeah. I mean, I don't really think of it as a biopic. I wasn't really interested in in telling um, like a blow by blow yeah. biopic of her. It's more like if you look at something like you know, like a, a film like Amadeus. That's not a biopic, but it's really exploring themes that maybe are connected to somebody like Mozart. Or, um, but yeah, the Gothic element was interesting because I mean, the Gothic element is such a part of Wuthering Heights, and I thought. You know, I think the thing about uh, the gothic genre is that it's full of emotion and full of feeling. And I think, um, I thought it would be a good way of expressing kind of this introverted young woman, what was on the inside. You know, like we have this scene 
You know, if you look at the mask scene, the mask was a real object that the Brontes had. But I thought, when I was writing the piece, I thought that could be a great uh, kind of magical object, but also kind of a metaphor for her creativity um, and her imagination, and also her mother. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it, talking a little bit more about Emily and how you portrayed her, I, uh, she's a very modern character, and I, I really like how you set it in a period piece, but still she feels like a, yeah, it's a very modern character. How yeah. did you go about making her feel so modern, but it's still a period piece? Though? Yeah, I think if you, if you, um, and you know, a lot of this to, is to do with Emma as well, I think how she does portray it. If you, you know, because I actually don't think we were that different back then, you know, everybody fell in love, everybody woke up and felt shitty that day, <laughs> you know, everybody had different hopes and desires and people screwed up and we were just people, we're just people, whether it's a hundred years ago or now. So I, I was really interested in kind of showing that, you know, through, through all the characters really, just this sense of. I guess authenticity, and um, I think when you're specific about characters, then they seem modern, you know. And I, um, but yeah, and I, I think I was interested in exploring, you know, just this young woman who, who maybe is a little bit ahead of her time as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I think also the film is, uh, it very beautifully shows the whole family and their family dynamics and. I wanted to ask you how how was it working with that this crew and the cast and because they it's not all you feel all the tension between them but also the love and it's not only through the dialogue but it's also through small glances and I think all of those little things how did you work with the actors and the cast to get this feeling? Um, I guess like I was saying we did we did about two weeks rehearsal and I I know for my, myself as an actor if I if I am allowed to kind of actually really connect to my fellow actor, you know, through just creating some time and some space to connect, then I feel like I can do a better job with my acting. So I created that for the actors, and they all lived together in the same house in the middle of the countryside, which they loved. And so they all kind of became great friends. And then we had this rehearsal period where we, you know, we did a lot of improvisation and um, little field trips and that kind of thing and I think all of that I think if you do all all that then I think that ends up translating onto the screen you know because I think you can do it yourself I think in a close-up you, you, you can totally manufacture something that feels very real but I think there's nothing better than real act you know actors really connecting to each other mm. and then you do, do get these kind of special moments um, and then, you know, we had a, I kind of believe that films are socialist activity <laughs> and that no one's as important as anybody else. We're all on the same level and all together we're creating the story together and everybody uh, kind of pulls together, you know, making a film is hard. So everybody pulls together to kind of create, you know, create the story together. Yeah. Yeah, so this was your first feature, and yeah. speaking about making a movie, with it, it's quite, it's a lot of work. It's a lot and of work. I was wondering, was there anything in particular that was a challenge during the, the filmmaking? Um, well, like everybody says, I think time is, is really hard. You know, you just don't have enough of it. And we had a lot of story to tell, and we shot it in six weeks, so I found that just not quite having enough time to, you know, you always had, had to think about the day and you know if I drop that you know is that still going to make sense or could we pick that up you know that kind of thing um, and then the weather was very challenging in, in Yorkshire as well uh, so just dealing with the the changing weather um, and just the edit I, I love editing I think it's my new thing that I've discovered that I just feel so passionate about but it is it's very challenging and it's its own kind of journey but um, yeah yeah, and picking up on that, I mentioned before that you're both the, the director and also the writer of the film. And in, in film school, they usually say that making a movie is in three parts. First time when you uh, write the script, and then when you shoot the film, and then when you edit it. Yeah. And I wanted to know a little bit, when would you say that in your process that the film is being made in terms of this? Yeah, I think that's true. I think all, all those it changes and I think 
I think that you know the, the script that I wrote is the film that is up there. But of course, you have all these different people that come together to um, help you tell the story. So they're in there too. So all those different elements come together. But I think um, one thing I love is I think there's actually a fourth kind of stage, which is when the audience you know meet the film. And what's been lovely is all, you know the different screenings we've had with festivals. Um, you know, everybody kind of greets the film in a slightly different way, and I just think that there's something lovely about that too. That the film doesn't really come alive until the audience, it's in front of the audience, and I feel like everybody brings their own thing to the film as well. But um, yeah, I love every stage, it's really a fascinating process. Yeah, and I, I will open up for the questions. I just want to ask one more yeah. <laughs> technical uh, question. And I think that there is a very inter interesting rhythm in the film, and it's not only through the editing, but it's also through the lightning and saturary. And could you tell us a bit more how you worked on those bits to create this feeling? Did you say lighting? Yeah, lightning and also the saturation. Oh, the saturation of the colour? Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, we worked with this uh, really beautiful um, grader, Isabel Glazer, who um, she did um, all of Jack Audiard's films and she just did, um, oh, what was it? Um, oh, I can't remember. But yeah, her, her work's really beautiful and she really, I mean, Nanu, our DP, did a lot of, uh, you know, just beautiful uh, framing and also, you know, with the, uh, the LUTs, um, you know, making decisions like that. But Isabel really, I, I think what she did to the final picture was, you know, really just so beautiful um, and that's something that's invisible that you don't really see and, and the other thing I just would love to talk about is the sound we had this amazing sound team and um, I think the mix of the sound really contributed a lot to the the, the feeling within the film um, yeah and then the editing was something that we found we, we just made a decision that the editing should really reflect who how Emily was feeling so that if she feels anxious, then we would pick up the editing and then other scenes we would just let play in a bit much more invisible way. And that was really fun kind of working out exactly what we wanted the visual language to be with the edit and things yeah. like that, yeah. And yeah, so, yeah, sorry. Mm. <laughs> so do we have any questions already now in the audience? Yes. yes. Uh, Hello. Please stand up and then, yes, and talk Whoa. loudly, please. <laughs> so everyone hears. Well, Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, so I'm probably a wreck after the whole film because it was really touching in oh, every, okay. all the aspects. And I love that you described it as a joint effort because it truly felt like every piece moved together like a, yeah, just like an emotional machine. So it was really, really amazing oh, to see. But so my question is, <laughs> uh, how does it feel to let it out in the world? Because I feel like that's also something that happens to feel that she does something. Yeah, the first like the first real screening we had was in Toronto, and it was like in front of a thousand people. And we realized actually we hadn't watched it in front of a full audience ever, so that was very kind of nerve wracking. But it was, and you know, and Canadians are very front footed; they laugh a lot. So we we're like, gosh, this is a really funny film. And uh, and um, but um, so that's I think that was really interesting. I thought actually I just came in and watched about the last kind of twenty minutes and. Uh, I thought you start to. I feel like you start to move away from it a little bit. You, I, I stop thinking, oh, why did I cut those two shots like that? You know, you kind of just start to watch the film and go, oh yeah, I put I put that there. That's interesting. So um, it's yeah, it's lovely. You get to kind of slightly move away from it, and I think that's kind of that's probably what the process is. But and you just appreciate it as a film, I guess. But yeah, but thanks. <laughs> Do we have any more questions from the audience? Yes. Good. Yeah, thank you. I have been to Haworth twice in oh, my life. Oh, fantastic. And I have walked all the way to Wuthering Heights, what is supposed to be Wuthering Heights. Oh, uh, yeah. Which is the ruin used in the movie where they meet Top Emily and her lover. Yeah. Uh, I have two, two questions. First, I mean, Wuthering Heights as in the movie, can't have existed like that in the lifetime of Emily Bronte. My second question, why this 
frequent use of thunderstorms. <laughs> Have you read Mother and Hunter? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I read. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, it's part of the kind of... The weather kind of also kind of reflects Emily's mood, I think, in the film. And, um, and, and that's kind of... Also in Wuthering Heights, the weather reflects a character's mood as well. So um, I kind of embraced that. Uh, and um, where we shot the cottage actually is not is not Top Withens, which is near Howarth. We that area is quite it's kind of quite trampled now, I and mean, you can see there's a lot of uh, telephone poles in view. So we actually went an hour's north to a little place called Dent, which is a um, which is a gorgeous place to have a holiday. It's like a wonderful kind of walking area. And we found it, we're actually, we were doing a recce and we just saw it on a hill and we stopped our cars and got out and walked across the field. And it had this tree growing out of it, this little cottage. So we thought, oh gosh, I think we found the, the cottage for, you know, for Bramwell and Emily and Waitman. So, so yeah. Does that answer your questions? <laughs> cool. Any more questions from the audience? Yes, in the back. First of all, thank you for the film. Uh, I've cherished it for a long time. Uh, oh, thank actually, you. Uh, I really love it. And um, the question is, was the rain real in the movie? But when you were making the movie, I was just inspired by this other question. The rain, actually, or did you have to, um, you know, did you have to do Hollywood on it? We <laughs> did. Um, so it's really hard to make uh, real rain register on film. And so uh, like the running sequence when they look in the window and the dogs, the very first one, and they, the, it starts to rain. There's like three real shots in that, and then we had to add rain to that to kind of get a flow of rain because it, you know, it takes so long to shot, shoot a sequence like that that it had stopped raining by the time we kind of came around the corner. And um, then some of those wide shots of the cottage and them running up, that again was a shot, was a composite shot that we added rain to. And we also graded it darker. It was day for night that shot. So, um, and then we used a, a rain machine when she was spinning in the rain at the end. That's a rain machine. So it's just you know because it's very hard to predict yeah. rain. Just, just curious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries. Yeah, a lot of people ask that. <laughs> <laughs> Any last question? Yes. Hey, first of all, also thank you very much. For um, I wanted to ask when you decided to take on this story and make this movie, was it like an immediate decision that you also wanted to write a script for it? Yeah, I mean, I kind of wanted to uh, move into directing, and my friends who were directors said, well, then you should write your own script because that's your bargaining chip to be able to direct. You have to say, I've got this great script. But I also love writing, I love reading scripts and. Um, I I I, uh, I I love the process of writing. Just find it's also a little bit like acting because you're kind of imagining what the characters are saying, but you get to kind of play all the parts. So I, I quite I quite enjoy that. Um, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> and to to finish this uh, Q and A, I would like to ask: like, this was your first time directing, and we we're very 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 impressed. Oh, and geez. so, of course, we're very curious now. Do you have any plans to continue this uh, working both in front of and behind the camera? Yeah, I, um, I really I love the process. I, I mean, it's, it was incredibly challenging and difficult, but um, I really loved it. And um, I'm kind of, I've written my next thing, so I'm hoping to kind of uh, get that made in the next couple of years, um, just in process. But yeah, definitely, I really, I really love it. Wonderful. We're hoping to invite you here. I to will Stockholm bring that my next one here to yes. Stockholm. <laughs> and uh, thank you so much again for joining us for this face to face. And thank you all for coming. Thanks, and, uh, guys. Thanks for coming. Thank you all. Thank you.